My name is Will Torres. I'm one of the admission officers at the Stanford Graduate School of Business, and we're so happy you're here to join us. Today, we are joined by three of our alumni whose stories I can't wait to hear and can't wait to share space with. Um, as we get started, also definitely want to recognize the incredible tra tragedy um, in Lebanon and hope that you are either able to contribute or do something um, by way to help our brothers and sisters out there to, in their road to recovery. So to our panelists. So we are going to start left to right. So Jonathan will be starting with you. If you can say your name, where in the world you are, and your, your favorite learning experience uh, at the GSB. And that could be either a class, a, a outside extracurricular experience, or the learning itself. Cool. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so I am Jonathan Avida, um, broadcasting live from uh, Omer, Israel, um, the southern part of Israel. Um, so for my favorite um, experience at the GSB, I think um, it's a close call between two. One is, which I'm, heard, I'm sure you'll hear a lot of, uh, which is touchy-feely. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk about uh, that later on in this, uh, in this call. Um, but it's a very, very powerful experience. Um, and I think my top one is um, leading the global study trip to Israel, um, which is just a phenomenal experience in, in many ways. Um, one is just, you know, leading a global study trip and, you know, uh, as an MBA two, uh, taking a group of MBA ones and, um, you know, uh, trying basically what I think makes, uh, what made it a particularly powerful experience for me is um, it made me for the first time try to uh, look at my country at Israel from the eyes of a uh, foreigner um, and you know so for like trying to uh, I don't know uh, explain uh, explain my country uh, to other people and of course you know meeting with all the you know political leadership and business leadership of the country uh, is just uh, amazing. Yeah Jonathan so, can you tell me a little bit more was there a specific focus of the trip, like was there like an entrepreneurship focus or another dimension that you're really yeah. interested in? Yeah, I mean, so um, Israel is known as the startup nation. Um, so yes, that was definitely the focus. Uh, we met, you know, the business leaders that I, uh, that I mentioned um, were for the most part, uh, or almost all of them were around, you know, entrepreneurship. So either um, CEOs of very successful uh, startups or, you know, companies that are even no longer eligible for the startup moniker um, and VCs. Um, and yeah, that was uh, definitely the, definitely the focus of our trip was the, the whole uh, startup ecosystem in Israel. Nice. Thank you. Ruchi? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much, Will, for inviting. So I'm Dr. Ruchi Dana. I, I was born and raised in the Middle East. So I was born in Libya, that's in North of Africa. And then our family moved to Dubai when the Libyan sanctions happened. So I did part of my schooling from Libya, part of it from Dubai. And then I went to medical college in India. And during my medical college days, I was working a lot on uh, low cost medical devices. I was really excited about like doing some innovations in that space. But like uh, I was the first student of my university to get travel grants and go abroad, present papers and all. But like that time, like the startup ecosystem in India hadn't developed very well. And I really was fascinated by the Stanford biodesign course at Stanford. So like the reason for choosing Stanford again was mainly because of the Stanford biodesign course. So like after my um, medical college days, I actually went to Stanford for my full-time MBA. So my favorite class would definitely be the Stanford Biodesign course because a lot of innovative stuff comes out of that. And I'm really excited about like the, the innovations that keep happening at the intersection of various disciplines. 
So what happens at the Stanford Biodesign course is that there are doctors, engineers, lawyers, PhD students, MBA students, everybody comes together to solve for unmet clinical needs. And our team actually won the NIH grant from the US government for needs finding. And, and then I led a trip to China on behalf of that. So apart from my full-time MBA, I also got the PMP degree. So that's, that's something that Stanford offers. Like if you like uh, complete certain course requirements and there's a, a practicum requirement as well. So that fulfilled as a practicum requirement. And I'm still in the medical device field. I'm currently working on a low cost robotic surgery startup and I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. So a uh, trip to China was kind of on the heels of some of your the things that you were creating? Yeah, so, so I actually traveled thrice uh, during my Stanford days. So one was a trip, uh, like an external trip that you have to take. So that was to Japan. So I really loved that. So like my senior class actually led that trip. So Jonathan's class would have led that trip. And then I, I led one trip to China that was on behalf of the Stanford Biodesign course. And then like um, in the second year, I led a trip to India and on behalf of like our class. So that was the, the, the practicum requirement for like, it's, it's, it's completely optional, but like I, I love to do that. And, and it was really exciting to lead the trip to India and meet various leaders and see various cultural sites as well. And, and that's when like you, you lead a trip and then like uh, the, the class next to you, like the junior class would actually be there. So recently I, I met the, the recent class that's, uh, that had come here to Dubai for one of their trips and it was really good to meet the, the students of the current class. Oh, that's awesome. I love when our alumni are able to continue connecting and, and seeing our students just in, like, in person. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Ahmad? Hi, everyone. This is Ahmed from Cairo. Um, I, so, dialing from Cairo, my favorite two experiences are uh, taking a class with Irv Grosbeck, uh, Conversations in Management. Uh, he has a couple of videos on YouTube, so highly recommend checking those out. And then um, a couple of dinners with like classmates where we just talk about raising capital, building companies. Uh, those really help kind of push our thinking and imagination. Um, and I think the last experience that really stands out is uh, going uh, on a trip to Europe, especially London and Berlin, to see the startup uh, ecosystem there. Uh, and meet with the top entrepreneurs and investors. Um, it, it kind of really helps you relate to how the actual building process happens and what needs to happen for you to kind of uh, build a company uh, one day. Um, after Stanford, I came back to the Middle East, now working with McKinsey. Uh, so, so anyone who's thinking about making that shift, happy to talk a bit more. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and start with a question for the group, very open-ended. Um, many of you are now working back kind of in the, the MENA region. What was that journey like? Where did, did you find career support? How did you find kind of your current position? All right, I can, I can go. Um... So one thing I uh, meant uh, to say, so I was thinking about it ahead of time, uh, which is uh, true and I think says a lot. Uh, I think, except for actually the job that I'm in now, like my four previous job post GSP were all of them, every single one. Uh, I got it through the Stanford network um, in, in one way or another. Um, so I think, it, you know, it, it really is uh, a very, very powerful thing. Um, yeah, and so specifically uh, in terms of um, moving back to Israel, um, which, which I did that two, about two and a half years ago after eight years in the Bay Area, um, and then it was... Um, the connection was through someone uh, that I worked with previously. And then Ruchi, I know you have a, also a global kind of trajectory. Can you tell us a little bit about like how you found like maybe your job after, like immediately after the GSB and then kind of 
how has that shaped your your trajectory yeah yeah sure so i i was uh, i really love the stanford biodesign program and now there are many such programs that are coming across in in the us and in other countries even in india but like that was like the pioneer program so I have been involved with the program and the faculty for very long and even currently like the low cost robotic surgery startup that I'm working on it actually came out of the program like the team was uh, was there so that's really exciting and we already filed two patents I'm one of the inventors of that so that goes back to the to my passion of like working on medical devices and all so like the GSP community has been really supportive and and the best part was that that since like I, I was very open in, in terms of networking and meeting people from other uh, like uh, schools as well, like the med school and all. So that actually helped me in quite a number of ways because even in a startup, like oftentimes you need to get support in terms of like data gathering or, or things like that. And you need support of professors and like different faculty members as well. So, so that has been really helpful because like the Stanford name itself, it opens up a lot of you know, the doors. But it's it's important to also like uh, be uh, present in the moment and network quite a lot because then it's then it's the best part that you can actually gather all the resources that you need to make your life a success. Nice. Um, Ahmed, you were there in at the GSB most recently of the group. There's a question here in the uh, box. How did Palo Alto feed into your overall experience since you have? some of the, the most recent vision of it. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And, and then how did you go from Palo Alto back to Cairo? Yeah, sure. So uh, first of all, Palo Alto lets you uh, ride bicycles more often than you would normally. So that, <laughs> that's an amazing part. Um, and then there's the fact that a lot of the top, if you're someone who's interested in tech or innovation, um, a lot of the top venture capital firms uh, technology companies are based either out of Palo Alto or maybe 30 minutes away. So you can literally go visit any of these companies uh, uh, and build those connections for yourself. So even when I was thinking about, you know, coming back and, and, and potentially building something, I met a couple of investors uh, in, in San Francisco and, and some in Palo Alto who kind of made a commitment that they would invest in a startup that I would build uh, if I would do something back home. And that just gives you a lot of confidence even if you don't necessarily go down that path. And then how did you go from Palo Alto back to Cairo? Did, did you have like yeah. you the alumni network, career management center? It, it, was, it was partly career management center. And then when I was interviewing for McKinsey, the partner uh, was a GSB alumnus and she met her husband in the GSB as well. And so, 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 so uh, I think that helped build some uh, rapport. <laughs> nice. There's a question here. Ruchi already started to talk a little bit about it. So the question from Abdullah is, what advice do you have for international students joining the program? And like, how do they maximize the benefit of the opportunity? And what Ruchi mentioned kind of networking beyond the GSB at the med school. Um, anything else or, or from the other panelists, what other tips might you have for, for international students thinking about coming to the GSP? Yeah, I think um, networking is really key. And apart from that, like, I think uh, I took my studies a bit too seriously at, at the GSP because I, I came from, from a medical background. So I thought like it would be really intensive and all. I remember once I cut short my Hawaii trip just, just to <laughs> study a bit and all. But now, now that I think back, I think like uh, networking and, and like uh, like mingling with people, that's that's really much more important because like, I still uh, like, I'm very much in touch with the, the people that I met in the GSB. We communicate very often these days. We are having like Zoom calls and all as well. And like, it's it's a very tight knit community. And, and I think uh, my only suggestion would be just to make sure to uh, like build those relationships when you're there because it's just a period of two years and then like, but those relationships would last for a la long time. And for international students, I would like to say like as um, like, uh, Abdullah was saying that in Palo Alto, there are like various companies out, out there that actually are uh, blooming and, and, and all of that is happening. But now that we realize that uh, many of these companies are actually opening up their offices in the Middle East as well. So I'm in Dubai and then there's Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Amazon, every, everything has come now to the Middle East as well. 
So it's important to have those links internationally uh, at the GSP, but like you can definitely find opportunities in the Middle East yourself as well, because like the, the best of the tech companies are now coming uh, to various countries in the Middle East as well. So that brings about like uh, a whole new angle to things because earlier on in, in when, when we were there at uh, like coming back to the Middle East was a big question and all, but nowadays it's much, much a sim simpler decision because you have all these tech companies already existing in the MENA region. Nice. Any other tips for international students thinking about coming to the GSB? How to maximize the experience? Yeah, uh, I mean, um, I think with, oh, sorry. Go uh, ahead, go ahead, sorry. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, I think this, uh, my experience is, uh, has been that this is mostly obvious for people, but uh, for all the international students uh, coming to Stanford Bell State anyway, um, and, and, and that is to um, escape your comfort zone a little bit. This is generally true uh, at the GSB and then sometimes in life. Uh, but what I mean by that is, it's easiest, uh, you know, to be around, you know, like I'm, I'm Israeli, so, um still you know to this day the, my closest friends are uh mostly the other israeli classmates um but uh, i made it a point i think all of us made it a point to like not just you know not just be a group right like we're, we're not just like okay a group of israelis like no uh you want to experience if you want to experience um you know if you want to get the full experience then then basically uh, try to, to talk to people from, uh, you know, like other international students and of course, uh, all, all the, the Americans and build strong relationships there. I think that's, that's absolutely key. Um, I agree a hundred percent, uh, with, with Richie and Jonathan. The one small thing I would add is, uh, also c coming in with some form of like idea of what you're looking for, what you want, because there's so many resources, uh, people from all over the world, uh, literally any path that you want to take, there are a lot of resources that can help you achieve the, the objectives that you have in that path. And so just going in with a hypothesis of what you want, uh, uh, I think can really help you focus your time. Uh, and also just get to know the people that you know are, are more uh, 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 closely linked to your interests and, and passions. Uh, uh, study, do the classes that are also linked to your passion, et cetera. So that would be my small addition. Nice. So kind of, you mentioned like having that North Star, sometimes as you shoot for that star, that journey will also like shift a little bit. Has anybody here um, gone through like career changes or pivots um, and how might the GSB have either helped or informed some of those changes that you've made in your, in your career? Yeah, I can, I can go about it because like I came from a very traditional background of like as a, as a medical doctor and, and like even making a decision of going for an MBA was something really big for me because like as, as a doctor, you have a clear set path of like practicing and all of that. So it was a big change for me. And one thing that that changed even further after going to the GSB was that like suddenly I got interested into startups. Before that, I would think uh, like this is something that I can never do. It's it's so difficult. I don't know what what tech problems people are solving and all of that. But once you go there, you see like at every coffee shop, at every place, like you you see people like sitting and discussing like new ideas of like changing the world and all of that. And then you get really excited. So I got introduced to the startup world. Uh, just because of uh, like my background in Stanford and I still am so much in touch with the startups and and like making a few investments and well and, and that's really exciting because like otherwise my my mind would have been like much more narrow or I would have stuck to a much more traditional field but like going to the GSB I completely changed my perspective about things like anything is possible and, and these are the people who are making the changes so definitely there's something that you can do as well. I can also say, um, so my experience was, um, I was exposed to so much that I didn't know existed before I came to the GSP, right? So before the GSP, I was, I was an engineer, 
Um, I knew I was interested in, in, in startups, but I, uh, you know, I knew vaguely that there was such a thing called consulting and you know, investment banking, but I had no idea what these things mean. Um, and so during the two years at the GSP, you know, for my internships and then later for my full-time position post GSP, I looked at so many different things, so many different things. So there are some people who are sort of like laser focused, like they know exactly what they want to do. Uh, I was the exact opposite of that. Um, and what is uh, nice, uh, what is good about the GSP is um, with all of my classmates, I, uh, through my classmates, I was able to learn about what are these things, like what is it actually, like what is management consulting really like? for almost anything um so so i think that was um you know just a, a tremendous help um and interestingly at the end uh what i wound up doing post gsp is exactly what i wrote in the career essay <laughs> which is again like not it's not that i was laser focused i looked at everything under the sun uh, but i ended up doing exactly what i thought ahead of time that i would do it's just interesting <laughs> Okay, there's a question here about the alumni uh, alumni communities in some of the different countries you've you've been in and or currently are in. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the uh, your the alumni groups where you're at? Like, how have they shaped kind of your experience post GSP? Yeah, I, I can speak about Dubai. Uh, we have a very good alumni network here in Dubai, especially because like all of these tech companies have also come here. So a lot of new talent is coming to, to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. So we have like get togethers very often. And now like recently we were planning one get together with the Saudi community as well and the Asian community as well. So we were planning a big uh, uh, trip here to Russell Kema and, and like uh, they have the longest zip line there. So we were planning to do that, but then just COVID happened. So that got canceled, but like, so this, this would have been like the first, uh, like in my history, it would have been the first uh, alumni gathering from various countries as well. Like, so because they, there were people coming in from India, people coming in from Saudi and other like GCC countries as well. But in Dubai and Abu Dhabi itself, we have a lot of meetups. We have some meetups with other schools as well. And there, there are some meetups that are specific just for the GSP community. And uh, like most in most of these uh, alumni networks, you have like not just the GSP community, but the Stanford undergrad students and, and all as well, because and there are a number of those here as well. And those actually add a lot to the experience because they, they can like we, we all relive the days that we spent at the GSP and at Stanford and that that becomes really exciting. Here, uh, here in Israel, I'd say, OK, so the Israeli community, both in Israel and in the Bay Area, are, are pretty tight knit. So, you know, the, the many years that, um, you know, was in the Bay Area post GSB, um, it's, it's a very uh, tight knit community uh, with a lot of like, you know, pre COVID uh, in person, uh, like uh, in person meetings um, and like, you know, real personal relationships. Um, and here uh, in Israel, my experience, uh, you know, I have less experience with the uh, alumni community here in Israel, but it's, it's sort of like, um, I feel like it's actually now picking up speed. Uh, like th there's more and more uh, things going on now. Awesome. Great. All right. And so this question is uh, directed towards Ruchi um, from one of our attendees. Can you speak uh, towards your experience at the GSB as a woman? Um, any clubs, organizations, um, other opportunities um, for women at the GSB? Yeah, there, there are a lot of clubs and, and opportunities for women. I think like diversity and inclusion is an impo important theme that Stanford is uh, focusing on and has, has focused on in the past as well. I remember like there were a lot of uh, like get togethers that was restricted just just for women and, and even in, in terms of like different tracks that women took. So like women in VC, women in like medicine and also th there were different those tracks as well that in which like you could just network and and find out and even stay in touch for later on like even currently i'm, I'm in touch with the women in vc community and like 
we we post like jobs and deal flows and, and and various other things so that that becomes an important aspect of of life as well and i i think at stanford like it's one of the most uh, liberal schools and 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 it focuses quite a lot on diversity and inclusion and that, that's the best part and and like even in terms of like the the accommodation and all everything is uh, so flexible and uh, you get to see like uh, a lot of collaborations happening within within the various uh, communities as well within within Stanford yeah nice thank you and then this question is going to be posed to the larger group feel free to take a moment or two to think about it so what was the biggest challenge so I'm going to adapt it just a little bit this is the question as asked is what's the biggest challenge you face to get into Stanford um, the admission side if you as amazing as you are, you'll, you'll never really know kind of uh, that element of it. But I think another angle to this question could be, what was one of the biggest challenges you faced at the GSB? And like, how did you work through that? Um, kind of coming back to the idea that the experience can take so many different directions. Like, what was a challenge that you faced? Um, and then how did you navigate your way through that? What resources or um, support networks did you tap into? Yeah, I think I think initially when I went to the GSB, like we had a lot of uh, like uh, close knit circle of the Indian people, and I sort of related uh, with them. So so that was good. But I realized very quickly that they were all engineers and coming from the IITs and all, and I was getting a lot overwhelmed with with the kind of uh, uh, like uh, courses that they were taking because like even in the first year there there are like the the basic advanced and the, and the various disciplines that you can take in each of the courses. So I, I tried to like take the most advanced courses and all, then I realized that it's taking up a lot of my time and I'm not being able to spend a lot of time with like quality time with my friends and all. So I realized that it's 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 okay to actually take a normal track and, and think about like your priorities in life. So I think that's that's a mistake that I made early on that I I was like, uh, like because I was thinking so much about Stanford and, and what I would do there. Like I was like, okay, everybody's taking this. I, I should go for this track. But I realized later on that it's like, it was taking up a lot of my time in terms of like putting in the hard work. So I realized that I should have taken like uh, much more soft skill courses or, or, or other things that would actually have matter much in life. Thank you. Wilk, is it okay if I, uh, you know, so I am not an admissions officer. I have no idea how decisions <laughs> are made, but can I try to uh, not give people advice? Uh, it was challenging in the admission, and I will also answer your question. Is that okay? Yeah, I'd love that. Okay. Um, so one thing that um, I found challenging in, in the admission process, and I think um, again, without really knowing uh, how things work, but sort of my impression that sort of like it's something that you need to do uh, is to uh, so I won't say what you needed. What I, what I try to do and what was difficult is to um, really you know have the application represent who I am. Uh, so it, it it's not just like okay. This is, look at my grades, look at what I did. No, it's like, um, uh, my goal was to get to a place where um, if I let my, my wife read it or if I let my, my parents read it, then they will know that it's, you know, from, from the essays, from the stories, like, this is me. You know, it's like not, uh, this is, uh, okay, wow, this, this sounds like uh, an amazing person. Like, no, this is, this is you. Um, so that that was challenging uh, for me, but it was uh, it was a great exercise in itself. Uh, to, you know, like the whole what matters to you most and why to like really think about it is 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 a great exercise. Um, so that's one, um, two. Uh, Will's version of the question. Um, one thing that was challenging for me, I talked about a little bit, was was um, uh, landing a job post GSB. Um, so. You know, a lot of people um, basically um, they, they they sign on uh, for their uh, full time job like in in February. I did not have a job lined up uh, even in graduation, which was very stressful. Um, how 
but uh, what was helpful is again the the GSB community we had like uh, we uh, put together uh, a group of people who were all in the same situation and we basically all kind of like uh, coached each other and helped each other and it was great uh, so it, like it would have been uh, very very unpleasant uh, to go through it uh, by myself uh, it was still a little bit unpleasant but drastically less unpleasant because of the strong support from from within the class i agree with that 100 uh, uh i think jonathan explained it very well i want to just answer both parts the the most challenging thing applying to the gsb was the most rewarding one which is answering the question of what matters most to you and why it was very difficult because i also wanted it to be kind of genuine authentic um, um, uh, so I took some time, spent, spent time with my family and, and, and close friends to get to the answer that I felt comfortable with. But when I, when I arrived at that answer, I was like, wow, yes, this is, I have so much clarity on what is important to me and kind of what I want to do in the future. Um, so that's the first part. On the second part, uh, one of the most difficult challenges is, I feel like, just my impression is that the GSB can be, it's a very high support culture, but also high expectations in, in some way. And so uh, between peers, you might find some, I would say a little bit of expectations or pressure to go in certain directions. So some people are building companies, other people are going to tech companies, product roles, other people are going to consulting, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I was the only, I think the only person who returned to the Middle East. So that was very challenging, uh, 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 just making that decision. Um, uh, because it, it went a little bit against the flow of, you know, uh, uh, find a, a good company in Silicon Valley and work for. Uh, so, so I would just say, uh, uh, you know, try to find something that you really care about, you're really passionate about. And um, uh, the way I dealt with this was to find a support system, a, a, a group of close friends who really trusted my uh, thinking and kind of helped me walk through that uh, decision. Thank you. Um, we do have a question here about work experience. So while there is no work experience requirement to apply and be admitted to the GSB, the question is about how that work experience might either inform or affect kind of how much you're getting out of the program. Um, can you talk a little bit about, did you have, like what were you doing before? So on the slide, we had a little bit about your, your pre-GSB um, industry. So maybe a little bit of what were you doing before the GSB and how did that shape um, kind of what you got out of the experience? Like, did that really impact um, your, the outcomes from your experience? Yeah, for, for, for me, it really helped me because like, uh, because of the work experience I had, I could understand much more about the courses at the GSB and just be much more uh, like uh, be able to participate even more in the lectures because like how the um, classes work is that like there are not a number of questions that are thrown at you and you have to like uh, give your perspectives as well so like when the case studies happen it it's add it adds a lot of value if you have some sort of work experience and you learn quite a lot from your uh, classmates work experience as well because they have interesting stories to share during the case studies so i think the work experience for me definitely helped quite a lot so i was working in the healthcare industry, I knew like I wanted to like do something in terms of like the, the business development of, of healthcare and, uh, but, but I didn't really understand the language of business. I didn't understand anything about business. So, so it really helped for me like to, to get that exposure early on that this is the need, the clear need that I want to solve when, once I'm at GSB. And I was really, I learned quite a lot from like the experiences that my colleagues shared during the case studies, during the lectures itself. So I think work experience add to that, adds a lot to that aspect as well. Like you learn quite a lot from your classmates as well. Uh, yeah, so um, pretty much, yeah, I agree hundred percent with everything that Rushi said. Um, Basically, it's the the I think a, a way to look at it is um, the class is sort of like a tapestry of like uh, a bunch of very very different um, backgrounds, 
and all of the all of those um, you know basically they're they're brought up in in class and outside of class and so um, you know my work experience uh, so I was uh, an engineer pre GSP and before that I served uh, in the IDF um, so you know I felt like you know, I had something to contribute in terms of, of talking about tech and in terms of uh, talking about leadership uh, somewhat. Um, but I knew nothing, absolutely nothing about the, the world of business. Uh, so first of all, you know, so if like in terms of um, what you hope to get out of the GSP, it's, it's different for everybody based on their background. Like for me, like all the uh, core curriculum was great. Like I, I, I was really interesting uh, for me to learn finance and um, operations and organizational behavior and all that stuff. Um, and, and econ, like th those things uh, were interesting for other people who uh, come from special background. Uh, that might be less interesting, but other things will be more interesting to them. So um, I think it's, it's, uh, like Amar was saying before, you know, be be clear on on you know what what it is that you want to 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 get out of it, and and when when you're at Stanford, like go, you know, stay true to that and 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 push for that. Uh, there's like so many um, there's um, all the student clubs, uh, which I'm I'm sure we'll uh, probably uh, get asked about. This is like. Uh, so many things that you can get out uh, of your GSP experience, it's up to you to sort of like be clever about uh, your path. Since, since you brought up clubs, um, there are a couple of clubs like I'd love for you, uh, the group to, to chat more about. I know uh, Ahmad, you were a a, one of the co-presidents for one of our regional interest clubs. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, so, so you know, I think uh, we talked a little bit earlier, Jonathan, Ruchi, Will, about you know the importance of community, etc. Um, and 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 regional interest clubs is just one way to build a community. Um, and so, I think in my experience, uh, I, I was co-leading the the Middle East club and helped also launch the first. Um, uh, Middle East Stanford Forum um, to help bring together people who really cared about the region and just want to, you know, discuss important topics. Um, and it was a really rewarding way of, you know, uh, getting to know people who shared interests, but to be very honest, just building friends. Uh, so a lot of these people, we, we just, some of them we have like weekly or bi-weekly calls. Uh, and when I was talking earlier about the support group, th this is a big part of where it comes from. The, you know, people who really understand your culture, um, uh, have a similar background, interests, and so they can kind of help guide your decision making uh, 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 when you need to think about the future. And also, I think one just small part, uh, there's a, an important part of the club in addition to like the professional networking and all that stuff is, is the cultural element. So, for example, in uh, uh, Ramadan, we organized uh, iftars for the entire class. Uh, uh, you know, some of our uh, 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 classmates organize trips. Um, so there's an important part of culture that helps you feel that you really belong to this place. Um, uh, so, so that's a part of it as well. Other so clubs I, 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 sorry, I, I have a couple of things that I, I, I'd love to share uh, about clubs. Um, so one maybe is uh, the Mina Club. Uh, so, um, you know, it is, uh, it is no secret to anyone probably in this call or anybody in the world, right? Like the, the Middle East, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky place. And, and Israel and the rest of the Middle East, it's a complicated relationship to say the least. Um, but um, in the Mina Club, uh, uh, I was able to participate in, you know, conversations with classmates that I don't know any other sort of like place in the world, like any sort of scenario where I where I'd be able to to be in in such conversations. Were you know that was, uh, you know, a very powerful experience. And and 
and you know one sort of like one scenario of that um i remember uh as an as an mba one in the beginning of the the first year at the gsp um we had a meeting of the mina club in uh, one of the mba 2s house and we were watching uh an israeli film um about uh it's called uh, dancing with bashir it's it's an israeli sort of like war movie um that's sort of like not in my opinion like not pro-israeli not anti-israel it's basically like anti-war and uh we were watching this movie three israelis uh two saudis one uh person or two people from egypt uh one person from iran and i remember, like to me that was a surreal experience uh but it just goes uh to, like i i just got to show like what uh, a special place uh the the gsb is and and how special the student clubs can be to allow you know such such an experience to happen yeah just 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 adding on to jonathan's point actually so i'm i'm uh, indian but i was born and raised in the middle east and i was actually the leader of mina club there so i was the cfo of mina club and it was like everybody is so receptive to to such things and and they allow you and and it's almost like a big family so i was leading like the mina club we organized a number of get togethers we invited a number of guest speakers so like the head of aramco had come to uh, stanford and that was really exciting so so you get all of these opportunities it's up to you to like take what what you really want to do because like there are ton of opportunities to lead to uh, like uh, participate in various events like there this number of brown bag lunches that happen like almost every day where you have a guest speaker coming in and you can just go in and and participate as also like uh, part of the leadership team of uh, south asia club so uh, so that that was another aspect but like i could relate much more to the mina club because i was born and raised in this region so so that was really exciting and it, like the best part was that everybody was so receptive of uh, like uh, like their elections that happen when you lead a club and also that that was really good uh, i loved it yeah nice and so as we start to wind down for the event Um I want to make sure that we get there's like a couple of themes here in the question box about tips um things that maybe you would tell yourself so take a moment and think if you can give younger you a piece of advice what would that advice be That's a tough question I'm happy I'm answering last <laughs> Yeah for for me I think it it was mainly about like I was taking myself so so seriously and I was like uh, one of the most uh, students uh, studious students in my medical college as well so I think like I went with that mindset and when I went at Stanford and I realized there are no board exams because the ed- education system here everywhere else is completely different that then there so like when when i realized there are no board exams it's like the, there's no great disclosure and also that that was a relief so i would say like uh, to not take myself so so seriously in the very beginning and, and to and to much more like relax and mingle more with the community that i think that that would be the one advice i would give myself yeah i i think i i resonate a lot with what richie said um uh I think one of the most special things about Stanford is its people and here I'm I'm referring to uh classmates alumni and professors uh so I think earlier on I was very shy to like reach out to professors and have lunches or dinners with them I was also very shy to reach out to a lot of classmates uh and now I'm actually friends with a lot of them I co-invest with some classmates uh so if, if there's any small thing I would just uh spend a bit more time getting to know the different people whether it's the professors uh the classmates the the alumni um and and just not waste any opportunity if you find this connection with someone uh in in the center community uh i think uh the advice that I would give myself is yeah is very similar is to and i mean i i did do a lot of that uh but basically um to get to know as many of my classmates as possible 
in depth, like to really get to know them, you know, because uh, in the GSP, it's something that we talk about a lot, like um, because it's a relatively cl uh, small class, then um, everyone knows almost everyone, uh, but there's knowing somebody and then there's really knowing somebody. So like, uh, I, 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 would, I would give myself the advice to like get to really, really know uh, as many people as possible. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. So right now, I do want to thank our panelists so much for your time. It is an incredible honor to be able to share the space and hear about your journeys. And I can't wait to see where it goes next. So once again, thank you so much, everybody, for attending. Thank you to our panelists. And with that, we wish you a great rest of the evening, rest of the day, and a great weekend ahead, wherever in the world you are. Thank you. And um, Hopefully we'll see you again soon.